Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 16 of Blender Master Course Materials, Textures and Nodes Part 1 of Textures If you are new to this course then do check out the previous 16 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment Currently in this chapter we'll go through these 4 textures in Blender in complete detail So let's begin with it First let's add the shader editor here For this right click here and select horizontal split and let's divide it into two parts left click to finalize click on this icon here and select shader editor now the first texture with which we'll start is the brick texture for this go to the shader editor and press shift plus a go to texture and select the brick texture let's place it here now to connect this brick texture with the principal bsdf take this color socket and connect it to the base color of the principal BSDF. Let's go to the render view and by default the EV render engine is turned on. So I'll go to render properties and select cycles. Now you can see this brick wall texture here. To see it properly let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad and let's zoom in. So the first basic thing that you can make with this brick texture is this brick wall. But you can also make a tile wall with the use of this brick texture. For this we have to focus on two things. The first one is that the brick width and the row height should be equal. And it's even better to set both of them at a value of 1. So I'll select this brick width, type 1 and press enter. Let's also go to the row height, type 1 and press enter. So basically it changes the width and the height of our tiles in our texture. But if you notice closely, then it starts from alternate ends. For example, the first tile here is incomplete, but the second one is complete. Similarly, the third tile is also half and the fourth tile is complete. And that's because the offset here is set at 0.5. But if I change it to 0, then you will notice that all the faces start from the same end that is all of them look uniform now but right now it looks very simple so suppose you want to rotate this texture by an angle of 45 degrees and to do this you have to add a vector mapping node here for this press shift plus a go to vector and select mapping let's place it here to connect this vector mapping to the brick texture, take this vector socket and connect it to the vector socket of the brick texture. Now both of them are connected but we need an input node here. So press shift plus A, go to input and select the texture coordinate. Let's place it here and we'll use the generated map. So let's connect it to the vector. Now this is the input which I connected to the mapping node because we want to transform this texture like rotating it or maybe scaling it then this brick texture is providing this texture on our object we use this principal bsdf for basically shading our object and the material output provides you this output that you are seeing in the 3d viewport now to rotate this texture in a particular angle let's say 45 degrees so you have to go to the rotation and since we have to rotate in z direction so i'll go to z type 45 and press enter this will rotate the texture by an angle of 45 degrees now you might have noticed that this brick texture gives you two options of coloring. The color 1 is set at white color and the color 2 is set at gray color. And you can see these colors on your texture on this face as well. But how do you control the impact of these colors? For this you have to use this bias parameter. Currently it's set at 0 but if I change it to its lowest value that is minus 1 then it will show only the color 1 on all the faces. Similarly if I set it to its maximum value that is positive 1 then it shows only color 2 on all the faces. And at the default value of 0 it displays both the colors on our texture. Now you can even change these colors from white and gray to some other colors. For example if I go to the color 1 and change it to something like orange then it will show a combination of both the colors that is the slight orange color and the gray color that is color 2. Let's select this color 2 also and let's change it to something like blue or purple and now it appears like this. So you can try a combination of different colors to see different types of color textures on your object. Now the next option here that you can see is the scale option and it helps you to change the size of these brick or tile faces. Currently it's set at 5 but if I increase it then you can see that the number of faces or the tiles have increased and their size has reduced. Similarly if I decrease it like this then their number has reduced but size has increased. And let's set it to the default value of 5. Also you can change the size and color of these edges here or basically the motors. By default its color is set to black which you can change from here. So if I select it, increase the brightness with the help of this brightness slider. Now you can see that the color has turned to something like grey. Similarly if I take it to red then these edges will turn reddish brown in color. Also you can change their size from the motor size option here. By default it's set at 0.02 but if I increase it to something like 0.1 then you can see that the width or the size has increased. To change it to the default value let's press ctrl plus z for undo now the texture on the top looks good but if you look at the sides then it's not what we were expecting and to fix this go to this texture coordinate and instead of generated connect the uv map to the vector then go to the edit mode by pressing tab select the uv option from here and click on cube projection let's return back to the object mode and here you have the brick texture on all the faces of this cube so that's all in the brick texture and now the second texture on our list is the checker texture for this i'll add 
add a new cube but first let's move it in y direction like this and left click to finalize the position now press shift plus a go to mesh and let's add a cube now we need to add a material on this cube so in the shader editor click on the new material and to see how the second texture of this chapter that is the checker texture works then in the shader editor press shift plus a go to texture and select the checker texture let's place it here and to connect this texture with the principal bstf take the color socket and connect it to the base color of the principal bstf now you can see here that as the name suggests it creates this check texture on our cube and in most of the cases you will be using this to create maybe the kitchen tiles or a chess board or something similar and you can even change the color of these cubes here and in this texture every alternate cube has the same color meaning that if this face one has a black color then the face next to it will have a different color but then the next face will again have the black color and the same happens with all the other faces and you can even change the color of these faces to change the colors go to this checker texture click on the color one and from here you can change the color by default one of the colors is set to white and here in the color 2 you can see that the second color is by default the gray color let's go to the color 1 again and let's change its color to red now you can see here that the color of these alternate faces have changed from white to red similarly if i go to the color 2 and if i increase the brightness from here let's change it to blue then your texture will appear like this now so you can add various colors as per your specified requirement in this texture and you can even change the size or the number of faces that should appear on this texture and for this you have to use this scale option if i increase this scale option then you will notice that the number of these faces on the texture will increase but their size will reduce similarly if i scale this down then the number of faces will reduce but their size will increase individually by default the scale value is set at 5 so let's change it to 5 and now this is all we have in the fundamentals of this checker texture so moving ahead the third texture on our list is the gradient texture but before exploring that let's move it in the y direction and left click to finalize the position now instead of adding a cube this time let's add a uv sphere press shift plus a go to mesh and select UV sphere but here we need to improve the lighting so that the other part of the face is also visible so select this light here press shift plus D to create a duplicate and to move it only in the X and Y direction press shift plus Z and now its movement will get restricted to only the X and Y direction and so let's place it here and left click to finalize you can position this lamp anywhere depending on the effect of lighting on your objects now let's focus on this UV sphere so I'll select this and we need to add a material here so press the new material button and now it's the time to add the gradient texture for this press shift plus A go to texture and select the gradient texture let's place it here now connect this color soft Okay, to the base color and you will notice some changes here so the gradient texture tells your object to transition between one color to the other and to be more specific than in this case between black and white color but if you closely notice then the colors applied are really not very perfect even if I applied the shade smooth then also the color is not perfectly showing the transition from black to white to fix this we need to add a color ramp so press shift plus a go to converter and select the color ramp let's place it here and with the help of these pointers you can change the extent of these black and white colors on your object and also its appearance suppose I take this first pointer that is the black one and if I move it like this then you will observe that the darkness is increasing on this side or basically the amount of black color is increasing on this side similarly if I take the second pointer that is the white one and I left click on it and if I drag it like this then you will notice the same with the white color as well now the black and the white color are clearly distinguishable in the texture of this UV sphere now let's try to add some different colors to see the transition for this first select this first pointer here that is the black one let's reduce its effect by dragging it like this and now to change its color click here to see the colors here we have to first increase the brightness with the help of this slider so I'll increase the brightness and let's change the color to blue now I have assigned blue as the first color of this gradient texture so you can see that with the help of this gradient texture it shows a transition on this UV sphere from blue color to white color similarly if I take this second pointer here drag it in this direction and to change its color click here and let's change the color to red and now you can see how amazing this looks with the help of the gradient texture your UV sphere is having a material which shows transition between blue color to red color and similarly you can try this with other colors also and you can even do this with more than two colors to do this you have to click on this plus icon and now a third pointer is added at the middle so with this third pointer selected I'll go to this color and let's change it to yellow and now you can see that it's showing a transition from blue color then in the 
the middle it's yellow and then to red color and this is how the gradient texture works you can even adjust these colors by moving these pointers like this and it will increase or decrease the impact of those particular colors so you can use this to create some amazing gradient textures in blender also you can adjust the position or the rotation of these colors by connecting this gradient texture with a mapping node for this press shift plus a go to vector and select mapping let's place it here now i'll take this vector socket and connect it to the vector socket of the gradient texture but this is not the result that we were expecting and i have told you this reason every time i use this mapping node and that is to connect the mapping node with an input node for which i need to press shift plus a then in the input select the texture coordinate let's place it here now connect the generated socket with the vector socket and the texture reappears and now you can use these location rotation and scale values to affect how these colors or the texture appears on your object for example if i try to change the rotation in the y direction and if i increase it like this then you will notice that the texture will also change also you can use this location to change the appearance of the texture for example if i change the location in the x direction then we notice that this completely turns into red color similarly if i take it in negative of x direction then we see that it completely turns to blue color but since we want the gradient texture to appear properly let's change the location in x direction to zero and let's also change the rotation in the y direction to zero and now it looks like this again and the last one that is the scale one is very useful in the gradient texture so if i take this x direction scale and if i try to increase it then you will observe that the blue color has reduced if i scale it up in the x direction and if i reduce it again then you can see that the blue color will slightly increase so you can use this scale option to adjust how your texture would look in most of the cases you will be using this scale option only to alter this gradient texture here and so this is all in the gradient texture now the fourth texture on our list is the magic texture so now we'll add a new cube in our scene press shift plus a go to mesh and select the cube let's move it in y direction and let's place it here let's give it a material by clicking on the new button here and to apply the magic texture press shift plus a in the shader editor go to the texture and select the magic texture let's place it here now this magic texture is used to create some repetitive patterns for example if you are making a wallpaper or maybe texture for some fabric in all these cases you will require a pattern which is repeating itself many times and so you should use the magic texture in these cases now to see its effect on our cube let's take this color socket of the magic texture and connect it to the base color of the principal bsdf and here you can see that the magic texture is applied and it gives a random pattern of colors to our object's material and you can alter these colors and the patterns with the help of these parameters like the depth scale and the distortion for example if i change the scale value then it appears like this and i can even change the depth value to get more variations for example by default it is set at 2 but if i change it to something like 4 then we can see that we get variations in the color earlier it was blue and green but now you can see that it's mainly pink and yellow colored so you can get some variations by changing the depth value also if i change it to 3 then you will get these colors for now let's keep it to the default value of 2 now you might think that it looks very simple like there's no complexity in it and to fix this blender gives you the option of this distortion value by changing this distortion value you can basically blend or mix these patterns more and more which will give it a complex look by default it is set at a value of 1 but if i increase it then you can observe that the texture is no more simple so you can set this distortion level as per the level of complexity that you want in your object's pattern or basically the texture now one important use of this magic texture is to create fabric textures and to do this basically you have to set the scale at a very high value and reduce the distortion so let's try to do this and before that i need to add an input node also so i'll press shift plus a go to input and select the texture coordinate let's place it here now i'll take this object socket and connect it to the vector i'll decrease the distortion to its default value of one and it is appearing like this right now to convert it into a fabric like texture we have to increase its scale value to a very high level currently it's set at 11 but if i increase it to something like 60 and if i zoom in now now, then you can see that it looks a bit like some fabric or some cloth and to see its effect more properly we can add a bump vector node in the shader editor so press shift plus a go to vector and select bump let's place it here now to connect this bump node with the magic texture i'll take this factor socket and connect it to the height socket here now i'll take this normal socket and connect it to the normal socket of the principal bstf and now you can see that it looks way too more realistic like it might take some time to render but after rendering you can see that it very much looks like a texture of a fabric now you can even combine different types of textures together to create some stunning materials for example let's try to make this tablecloth by combining the magic texture with the checker texture that we learned in this chapter so with this cube selected i'll go to the shader editor and let's add a checker texture for this press shift plus a go to the texture and select the checker texture let's place it here now see the reason for choosing the checker texture is that it will create checks on our cube like we have on this cube here so you can understand it like the 
checker texture will give the color and this magic texture will make it look like a real fabric. So I need to connect the checker texture to the principal BSTF using this color socket. So I'll take this color socket and connect it to the base color of the principal BSTF. Now here is a black and white checker texture combined with a fabric like texture which is due to this magic texture. We can even change the color of these squares to give it a more realistic look. So I'll select this color too and let's set it to red color. Let's also increase the brightness from here and it looks like this now. And now it looks like a real clothes fabric. So this is all in the magic texture and also this brings us to the end of this chapter. Today we discussed about the fundamentals of the four important textures in Blender. That is the brick texture, the checker texture, the gradient texture and in the end we explored the magic texture and even combined it with the checker texture to get this result. And in the next chapter we'll be discussing about these four textures in complete detail. So our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 17 textures part 2. If you are new to this channel then do subscribe and press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.